So anyway, I've got my clips. Now let's go on to editing. So I'm going to go to the Edit tab. Just double click on the wide shot and have a look at it. I can drag through it. I can play it. Brilliant. Okay. Stop it. Keyboard shortcuts are things like spacebar for play, one frame forward and one frame backwards with the arrow keys, hold down on shift and it's one second forward and one second backwards, all sorts of things. Lots of that very, very similar to what you'd be used to in every other editing program. So what I'm going to do is select where I want it to start, mark that as the in point, select where I want it to end, mark that as the out point. And now what I've done is, as I would in any other program, selected the bit I want to use. Some really nice stuff you have here are ways of displaying things. So for a start, you see you've got a little icon down here with a kind of film strip on it. If I click on that, I can show the source. I can do things like show audio tracks. Took a couple of seconds there to draw the waveform for me, but I can see the audio track in the display. There's also a multicam there, so it's got a very nice multicam feature. I click on that, that's how you show your multicam clips. Let's put it back to source. All of these windows, they have a bunch of buttons underneath them. If you right click on them you might get other things you can do with it so like right clicking on the ruler gives me the option to do things like make sub clips and so on but there's also three dots up in the corner and if you go to those three dots it gives you some other options it's a bit like the little stack that you have in premiere and one of the things you can do if you click on that is there's this nice show zoomed waveform and it puts in there a little waveform of the sound underneath the picture i can show the whole thing so it's showing me the entire clip, or I can zoom into it so I can show me a much smaller thing. That just helps me to look at it and work out where certain sentences are, because he comes in and he says, hi, hi, hi. David. David, there's the David. It's just helped me to work out which bit's David. That's nice. Just introduced in 12.5. There are three dots like that on other things. So if I come over here to the media pool, they call this the media pool. It's basically the project window like you get in Premiere and I click on those three little dots, there are things like turn off this film strip at the top. You know, if I click on a clip and show the film strip, in this text mode, I actually get to see the clip up there and I can just drag along it and see what's going on in the clip. If I click onto this in icon mode, then obviously I'm into an icon mode instead. But in text mode, you can have a little film strip up there. There's other options you get down here. So this thing is what they call the edit index. And once we've actually shoved a clip on the timeline, it'll show you time code and all sorts of other stuff about it. But if you click on the three dots, uh, there's other stuff you can make it show. Like you could just get it to show all the markers that you put on the timeline. Like every program in the world, there's markers you can whack in there and use. And you can get the edit index to just show you that. But anyway, I'm going to take that, drag it, dump it onto the timeline. You notice as soon as I drop it onto the timeline, you get tracks just like you do in every other program. You can add in tracks so either add in a single track or lo lots of tracks you can see you've got video tracks and audio tracks and you've got different types of audio tracks these still are things will be very familiar if you're used to premiere in something like edius or avid you only have stereo or mono but in here you can do 5.1 it doesn't mix 5.1 but you can use 5.1 and you've also got adaptive tracks where you can tell it where they're going to go in the final file if you're doing a multi-channel audio most of the time you'll probably just use stereo and ignore all that stuff when it comes to actually doing an edit, that's about where he starts. Let's go in. David, I want to ask you about ABCHD. How is he to, to edit? Out point, drag that, whack it onto the timeline. Again, there we are, building up an edit in exactly the same way that I would in Premiere. Let's find the shot of me. Now I want to insert that in there. So just like in every other program, there's buttons to do it here. Stick the cursor where you want it to, click on that, and it inserts clips. Or, like you do get in sort of Premiere and say Final Cut Pro, you can drag it over here, and then you have the option to insert it or overwrite or replace. So let's just whack that in there. So pretty much in the same way you do with most programs, there are some subtle differences. So, for example, if I was in Premiere, I would drag it and hold down on Control. We don't have that inside of Resolve. If I was in Edius, I would go into insert mode and drag it and drop it and it would move stuff out of the way. It doesn't do it that way. So you can see doing pretty much the same as other programs has its own way of doing things, which is slightly different, a bit like going from Premiere to Edius, but it's still doing all the same things. It's got some very nice trimming on the timeline as well. So obviously you can just grab hold of stuff and trim. And you'll notice there it's actually trimming the edge off, but the whole big white square there is showing me how long that clip is. 
so I know you know how far I can drag it out if I want to make it bigger. But like every other program, it, it does overwrite modes, or you go into ripple editing and it does a ripple edit. But you can click on this little thing and unlink them. So you can do a, an L cut or a J cut, or you can select one and get rid of it just by clicking the unlink button. Even if the link button is selected, you can hold down on the Alt key and select stuff, and then that will let you just do one or the other. So again, Alt key, typical keyboard shortcut used in every editing program. There's also track patching. So if I'm trying to add another clip in here, let's just go from here to there. I want to dump another clip into the timeline if I'm using the buttons. Where it goes is down to these V's and A's. If I turn the A off and dump it onto the timeline, you notice the video only goes in. If I drag it, the video only goes in. If I turn the A back on, the video and the audio go in. Actually, when it comes down to the editing, it didn't take me very long to learn the slight differences between this and Premiere and Edius, because a lot of it's very similar. There are other things like slipping and sliding editing is nice and simple because you go into the ripple mode and then depending on where you put your cursor depends on whether it's slipping or sliding. So if I click on that, you'll notice that I'm now slipping through the clip. You know, I'm changing the bit of the clip that's being used of me without moving anything else around it. And you notice I've got a nice four up display there to help. If I do it at the bottom, I'm now sliding that up and down the timeline and making the two Ringo shots bigger and smaller and not changing me. And that's slipping and sliding editing, which again, you can do in Premiere and Edius in different ways. In Resolve, it's a matter of selecting that and just clicking on the right bit of the clip. The razor obviously chops stuff up. I mean, lots of stuff there, which is basically like, like the other programs. In terms of how the timeline looks, obviously you can make things bigger and smaller. You can make the sound bigger and smaller. If you come to this little icon here, you can click on it and you've got the option of A, how big you make the tracks. Or you can just go to this view where you, know, you haven't got audio and video showing at all, but you can get a lot of tracks on screen. This view where you've got head and tails, and this view where you've got a film strip. Like all modern editing programs these days, that thumbnail in there does not represent any particular segment of time. If you zoom all the way in, that's not showing you a whole frame, which is pretty much where all the other editing programs do. I tend to go for head and tails anyway, purely because I find if you're using compressed footage, sometimes it takes ages for this stuff to pop up, but I go for that one. Let's make the audio bigger and turn the waveforms back on again. And then you can zoom in out using this thing. But again, all that pretty familiar. Nice stuff that it's got, just slightly different to other programs, are things like when I come into the sound, let's go to the first clip, which is a little bit quiet, and there's a line there to make the sound louder. Well, if you drag that line, you notice it's getting louder, but the nice thing is the waveform is changing. It's giving you an indication of how loud it is or how loud it isn't, which I like, that's nice. Other nice things are, if I want to do a fade at the start or the end, you might notice these little white handles at the top. Well, if you grab hold of that and drag, let's grab hold of the white handle, it's telling me how far I'm dragging it. You know, I've added on 25 frames. Remember, I'm 50 frames a second, so, I add on 50 frames, that's a whole second. That's added on a one second fade in. You got the same on the sound, drag, blah, 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 one second fade in. Yeah, you could use transitions to do that sort of thing instead. And there are a variety of transitions. I can't see it at the moment, but I've got to click on this effects library thing to bring them up. And for that matter, why don't I turn off this bottom thing? Cause I'm not using that very much. So I'm gonna click on edit index and turn that off. And it gives me a list of all the effects that I've got. Now they call this effects, it means transitions. If I want to add a blur onto that or any other kind of effect, I come to the color tab and then I start adding stuff. These effects are all transitions. So I want to take a barn door transition and whack it on there, I can just drag it and drop it. And now I've got a most groovy barn door transition. But it's a lot easier than that. Let's get rid of me barn doors. If I wanted to transition there, all I've got to do is come down to the join right click and say add in a dissolve so my default is a dissolve and add in a 50 frame cross dissolve there we are I've got a one second dissolve come to the start right click add in 50 frame dissolve I've got a 50 frame fade in so you don't have to use those little white handles to fade in you could just use a transition you might notice that there it's struggling to get through that transition it's dissolve it's something that you'd normally expect a computer to fly through. And it is like that, but it does all the effects on the graphics card. And I've got a very nice graphics card in here, but there are some effects that aren't accelerated by the graphics card. 
And so sometimes you'll find, yeah, it does take forever to do something. Other nice stuff, you can click on this and you can bring up a mixer and there's an option for a clip mixer. So you can adjust the level on the audio using that. Or there's the option for a track mixer where you can adjust the level on the entire track. And you do have options in here for recording these things live as you're playing back. Another really nice thing is that you can actually put effects on the entire track. So if I wanted to have an effect on the entire audio track, I could do that. You'll notice in my list of effects here, I've got a bunch of transitions. Uh, I've also got some audio transitions. And then there's the option for some open FX plugins and audio FX plugins. So here you can see I have got a bunch of plugins from other people, a bunch of plugins from HitFilm and from Boris. But for most of these, I would actually be popping into the color tab and adding them there. Audio effects are VST plugins. So it accepts VST plugins, and I have got a couple on here from Isotope. I've tried quite a few free ones, and just like all free VST plugins, they're a bit variable. Some of them cause it to crash and not work properly. I haven't found a range of ones that I'm particularly happy with it at the moment, but then that's pretty much true of all programs because VST plugins are very variable. Another thing you can do is to add audio effects to an entire track. Now, it's not immediately obvious how you do it. I don't have many audio effects in here. In fact, the ones I've got aren't that particularly brilliant. But imagine I wanted to put one of those two onto a complete audio track. I mean, I can just drag it and put it on a clip. Then once it's on a clip, it turns up in the inspector and I can adjust it. But what about if I wanted to put it on a whole track? What you do is you basically grab hold of the effect and drop it on the track header. And now you can see I've got a little FX icon to tell me there's an effect on that entire track. Now to actually adjust it, what you've got to do is, you know, if you start clicking around on clips, nothing happens. But if you press this button, which is the button that will open up and show you the track keyframes, and then click on the track itself, the inspector up here shows you the effects that you've got on that track. And now you can adjust it, do whatever it is that that effect does. Now, I haven't got any decent effects to put on here, but that's exactly how you'd put it on an entire track and then adjust it. Close it up again, go somewhere else, and that's it. That effect is now on that entire track. If you want to get rid of it, click on that, and then the black area, and then you can come up here and get rid of it with a bin. But again, nice thing you can do is put an effect on an entire track. I do that with, say, a compressor to try and even out my speaking whilst I'm actually talking and recording a voiceover for something like this. I put a compressor on there, it might even it out nicely for me. The other thing you have here is titles. So it's got a fairly basic title generator. Let's take a bit of text and just drop it on top of Ringo and size it to fit. And here I want to change the words to be Ringo's name. This guy here, his name's Ringo. So you stuff it on there and you click on it and then you open a thing called the inspector, which is a bit like the effects control window in Premiere. So if I just click on that, you can see then I get access to stuff to do with the title. So I can just change the words and let's change the typeface and the color is okay, but I could do with an edge. So let's pop down a bit and add a stroke on the edge. I could add things like a drop shadow and so on. Open that up and you can put things like a background around it, but it is fairly basic. And the major thing I want to do is move it. So what I'm actually going to do is to come back to the top here and then just move the X position and the Y position and shove it over there. It is possible to move it around on screen. All you've got to do is come over to it, click, and then you can drag it and move it around. Double click, you can change the text. Or you can do it over here. You can even animate it. So let's say I wanted those words to come on, sit there, and then fly away again. Well, what I can do is come down here to the position, and then I can animate the position. That's where I want it to finish off. So what I'm going to do is tick on this little thing and add in a keyframe, and that's where it finishes. And I'm going to go back to the start, and let's move it off screen. And there we are, on it flies. It might sit there for a bit, and I'll put a keyframe in there, so it's just sitting there. And then at the end, I'll fly it off again. So I've done a fairly basic animation on the text, but it is possible to do. One thing you might notice, though, as I'm playing that thing there, it throbs a bit in the middle. Now, if I didn't have the keyframes at the end, it wouldn't throb, but it does throb a bit in the middle, and I haven't found a way of stopping that. Now, this could be something that will be fixed in a later version, but if I put a bit of animation at the end of text, it just seems to do that, which is kind of irritating. 
Titling is a bit crap. I mean, my way of solving that was actually to chop it into two halves and have one half flying in and another half flying out. I can get at the keyframes for any of this just by clicking on that and it shows me the keyframes or I can click on this one, it gets me to a full blown curve editor. So you can see I've got my little keyframes in there. I mean, for a start, I could just get rid of that one and get rid of that one. So now the thing isn't moving and oh, look, it stops throbbing. So again, titling a little bit limited. Of course, that curve editor and everything else and the keyframes might give you an idea that you can do other effects like, let me go to the media pool, grab hold of this shot of Ringo, put it above everything else, click on it, go to the inspector, and yep, I can zoom Ringo in and shove him up in the corner. I can even click on this thing and grab him and do it. And then what I could do is actually activate keyframing for positioning, zooming, and then kind of move through his entire clip and fly him around the screen. And you'll notice you get motion paths and handles, and if you open it up, this is where you can actually go to a particular keyframe and change the, the graph between them, and so on. So it's quite nice. So a lot of nice options in there for doing effects. Let me just get rid of Ringo there. Things to look out for, which have sometimes messed me up, are things like deleting a clip off the timeline. Typically this has happened when, say, I've wanted to get rid of that piece of audio, but keep everything else in there. So I've undone the linking, clicked on the audio, pressed delete, and everything disappears. It does that quite a bit. If I got rid of that title off the top, it would actually cut out everything else on every other track. You can turn off sync locks and things to sort that out, but actually what I do is I select it, and instead of pressing delete, I'll press cut, which is control and X, and that will get rid of it and leave a hole. The other thing that sometimes has bugged me is I'll be playing stuff, and then I'll come down and click somewhere, and I'll expect the playhead to stop moving, and it doesn't. Actually, when you get used to it, it's quite nice. Because particularly when I'm doing things like editing tutorials, you know, I want to cut a bit out in the middle there. Well, it'll be playing and I'll grab the playhead, put it there, mark that as an endpoint. But because I never press the stop button, as soon as I let go of the playhead, it actually carries on playing. Oh, then I could delete that bit. And it's still going back to playing. Every time I do something, it goes back to playing because I didn't press stop. I find it sort of useful and also annoying in different amounts. So useful sometimes, annoying in others, so that's just how it works. It will carry on playing unless you tell it to stop. You can also do lots of different timelines. I've only done one timeline right now, but I can take another timeline, you know, bung some clips onto that, and then make up another timeline. I'm on timeline three, so let's put timeline two in there, and where's the other one? Timeline one, so I can put timelines inside of timelines. I can then go to this timeline two and right click on it and then say open it. So I'm now fiddling with the timeline that's inside the other one. And then you can pop back to the main timeline. And just like Premiere or Edius, you can nest stuff and it nests the audio as well. You can do things like then decompose it. So if you said, oh, well, I wish that wasn't a timeline anymore, you can actually say decompose it and it becomes a bunch of clips from a timeline, so lots of nice stuff there, doing things other programs do and maybe a little bit more. One thing you might have noticed there that can be annoying is sometimes it doesn't play stuff back. So like my title there, when it doesn't play stuff back, this is what happens, it goes completely rubbish. It's not playing anything at all. There's a little indicator up there telling you how many frames it's not playing, and then suddenly it catches up and suddenly I'm back to 50 frames a second, but it's really, really not playing those properly at all. Unlike Premiere or Edius, you know, it'll play you something and it'll go from not playing 100% properly to not playing so well to not playing at all. This goes from not playing very well to not playing at all. It uses the graphics card to do all the effects. So if you have a really nice graphics card, then it'll play lots more of effects. And you can pile on quite a few effects, particularly the color correction. I could do multiple layers of clips flying around quite happily with a decent graphics card. But if your graphics card isn't up to it, you'll find a lot more times where you just don't see a thing. Now you can render it. So let's just quickly talk about how you can set rendering up. 